I, I mean, I grew up in Sri Lanka. This is, you know, this is where I was born and bred. I have found my heart's calling and I don't think I want to let go of it anytime soon. The water is my element. Um, the ocean is certainly a large part of me. The first day I saw these whales out in our waters in you know, 2003 when I had six blue whales within four square kilometers of where I was, I, that was it for me. That, I knew that that was a sign and that I had to do something about it. See, what I'm trying to do is figure out why the whales are here. What exactly are they feeding on? What kind of depths are their food in? Those are like big questions that are still looming. 12 miles off the southern tip of Sri Lanka, marine biologist Asha DeVos studies a little-known population of blue whales, the largest animal to have ever lived. Oh my goodness, look at that. Ah. This population is really unique. One of the main things is that they don't actually migrate to polar waters like other blue whales. They hang around in you know, warm waters all year round, which you don't expect because polar waters are much more nutrient rich than tropical waters. And the sheer fact that these animals are able to stay in these waters all year round is very, very intriguing. Whoa. Asha's effort, which she calls the Sri Lankan Blue Whale Project, is the only long-term study of blue whales in these waters. Wow, look at that. That was a shot, man. I'm out here in Sri Lanka, beautiful island, but this is a new, totally new area in my country. It's, it's something that no one's really done before. And I'm kind of, I'm very much on my own around here. We don't have a lot of the infrastructure, we don't have the support, the equipment. In this part of the world, what I do is very unorthodox. Just the fact that I get out there on boats and work in the middle of the ocean with these large animals, it puzzles so many people. I, I mean, I go into the fishery harbour and every day I'll have someone say, so your parents don't mind? Or, you know, shouldn't you, have, shouldn't you be married and have kids? Because, you know, that's what people are used to. They will give me a reading of the salinity and temperature over here. And the reason I'm interested is because we saw, you know, in the morning we saw whales over here. I try to collect some salinity temperature data so we can look at kind of what conditions we see these prey patches in. Blue whales are baleen feeders who dine on krill in the water column. Asha is out here today trying to figure out where the krill are and how the whales move through the area. She believes the whale's behavior is powerfully influenced by the region's geography. In some ways they're trapped because uh, unlike other ocean basins that are connected from north to south, the Indian Ocean isn't. The Indian Ocean is blocked in the north by the Indian subcontinent. The physical environment has a lot of huge role to play with these whales and the fact that they're here all year round. Okay. Hold it. Okay. Born in Colombo, but armed with a degree in marine biology from Oxford, and currently a PhD student at the University of Western Australia in Perth, she constantly applies for grants and seeks help from other scientists just to get basic equipment. So we've got an echo sounder here. It's a scientific echo sounder. So it's basically like a, a fancier fish finder. I didn't have the equipment. It's a nice, expensive piece of equipment that tells a great story. So I've brought in a team from Duke University because they have a lot of experience um, with this equipment, they own the equipment, they've been using it all, all over the world to answer very similar kinds of questions. This data has never been collected in these waters before. So, you know, it's a really, really kind of new area that we're really kind of moving into. This is a general purpose transceiver, or GPT. And what does it do? This receives the signal from our transducer, the echo sounder, an actual uh, device in the water. And this communicates with the computer and sends a signal to the computer. Shall I run the program? Yeah. Hunted nearly to extinction in the 19th and 20th centuries, blue whales are in a state of fragile recovery across the globe. Only about 15,000 remain from the estimated 300,000 that once roamed the seas. They can grow to over 100 feet in length and weigh over 150 tons. The population here off Sri Lanka are known as pygmy blue whales because they are slightly smaller than other groups 
yet they still grow to more than 80 feet. So I like to call these guys the unorthodox whale because they have kind of broken all our assumptions about blue whale populations. They have these different behaviors, they have different call types. In many ways, I want to be the person who like un tries to understand these but also takes this out. You know, the world needs to know more about them because I think the more we understand, the more we can protect. Protection is key. In 2009, Sri Lanka emerged from a brutal quarter century of civil war. But with peace has come a rapid rise in tourism. Tourism is booming. Unfortunately, the whale watching, it's unregulated in our waters because boats are just driving helter skelter. There's very few operators that respect the animals. That for me is a worry. I don't want it to explode into something that becomes a harassment for the whales. Also, the whales swim through one of the busiest shipping channels in the world. Ship strikes are common. Dead whales are increasingly being seen. This whale, found in April, had its tail nearly severed from the body, a sign of a potential ship strike. Another whale washed ashore in March. Asha often gets a call when dead whales are found. The shipping lane's just out there. It's not very far out. At the moment, we could see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big ships going right past. largest animal that's ever lived on the planet, you know, and, and we know next to nothing about it. I, so the other mission that I kind of have is to inspire a new generation of marine biologists. When I talk about it, I have Sri Lankans with this um, look of amazement on their faces because we are a land of elephants and now we have whales, you know, blue whales. You, you know, it's incredible. They were just like the for forgotten children. But I think in this new era of peace, um, the blue whale is very fast becoming the new symbol of our country. Yeah. 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 